Ponzi schemes, bad financial advice, and in one case, a father taking advantage of his own son. Would you believe we're talking about sports? Here are sports stars who were scammed out of millions. Terrell Owens is one of the most electric wide receivers in NFL history, but unfortunately, his awesome athletic abilities doesn't mean he's been great with money. The longtime 49er ran a bad route with his cash, he told GQ in 2012. After earning an estimated $80 million, according to Insider, he blew it all. T.O. claims that a big chunk of his fortune was lost to a shady financial advisor. In 2013, Owen sued his high-powered agent Drew Rosenhaus, who introduced him to sketchy money manager Jeff Rubin, a man who lost him $6.5 million. According to CBS News, Rubin also lost $43 million of other NFL players' money on high-risk investments that went belly up. Rubin was so reckless that the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority banned the money man from any association. However, after a long fight, Owens dropped his suit. According to SpotRack, quarterback Vince Young raked in nearly $36 million during his career. But by 2014, Young had already blown through all that cash and filed for bankruptcy, according to a deep-dive profile of his financial woes by Sports Illustrated. Young succumbed to the usual temptations of athlete excess, but he says it wasn't all his fault, and in 2012, sued both his ex-agent and former financial advisor for fleecing him of $5.5 million. According to ESPN, Young's attorney claims that the two defendants forged the athlete's signature for loans to pay off his agent's personal debts. The suit was settled in Young's favor in 2013, but in 2015, the former QB filed a subsequent suit saying he'd been stiffed out of one of the payments his crooked former money manager owed him. As of this video, Young's net worth is estimated at negative $1.5 million, according to Celebrity Net Worth. It was still my fault that these things happened to me because it was my fault I wasn't paying attention, so I was immature about that. John Elway had the misfortune of playing in the era before NFL salaries exploded. Over his 16 perennial Pro Bowl seasons, the two-time Super Bowl champion and one-time Super Bowl MVP made a relatively pedestrian $45 million in total contractual salary, according to SpotRack. That makes it all the more crushing that the former Broncos sunk some $15 million into an actual Ponzi scheme, according to the Denver Post. Court docs showed Elway sent the cash to a hedge fund manager named Sean Muller, who was subsequently charged with operating a pyramid fraud. Fortunately, Elway has other legitimate business ventures and, despite the hit, maintains a truly eye-popping net worth of $145 million, according to Celebrity Net Worth. The colorful former Chicago Bull Dennis Rodman may be the most aggressive rebounder in NBA history, but one thing he can't seem to rein in is his own finances. In 2011, Rodman was rightfully inducted into the NBA Hall of Fame. During his speech, he thanked a woman named Peggy Ann Fulford, not knowing she was a con artist. Peggy ran a sports management firm and had taken on Rodman as a client after his retirement. Fulford began managing his accounts and stole so much of his money, he ended up missing child support payments and even had the power turned off in his Florida home. Fulford was sentenced to prison in 2018 for 10 years. According to SportRack, the worm raked in over $27 million over 12 memorable seasons in the league. As of 2021, the once sizable fortune had been wiggled down to a mere $500,000 in estimated total assets, according to Celebrity Net Worth. Ricky Williams will go down as a phenomenal running back in both college and the pros, but he will also be known for signing one of the worst contracts in NFL history, according to ESPN. Williams' contract was lucrative in theory, but incentive-laden to an extent that it could arguably be called a scam in itself. According to an analysis by 538, his performance goals were close to unachievable, with the site concluding, Ricky Williams got screwed. To make matters worse, Williams retired early after failing a series of drug tests for marijuana, according to Sports Illustrated. He decided to make a martyr of himself on the issue and paid the price. 
That should have been okay, considering he still earned many millions before the age of 40. But then came Peggy Ann Fulford. At one point during Fulford's trial, the judge asked William's wife how much of her husband's money the con artist had stolen, and according to Nola.com, she simply replied, "...all of it." Cristiano Ronaldo didn't lose millions, but deserves an honorable mention after being scammed out of some $340,000 by a travel agent in the soccer star's native Portugal, according to the local newspaper, Jornal de Noticias. In 2021, a 53-year-old Portuguese woman named Maria Silva confessed in court to using the forward's money to book roughly 200 trips all over the world for her other, less well-heeled clients. Silva then pocketed the fees directly instead of having them pay the company she worked for. But obviously, don't cry for Cristiano. As Insider points out, this is less than one week's wages for the billion-dollar baller. Silva was given a suspended sentence, but was ordered by a Portuguese court to reimburse Ronaldo and the other clients she defrauded. In 1987, the 7-foot-2-inch longtime Los Angeles Lakers center and most prolific scorer in NBA history, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, was turning 40 years old and was getting ready for a bittersweet final season, made even more bitter by his financial situation. A man named Thomas M. Collins allegedly cost several notable NBA players of Abdul-Jabbar's era millions, and resulted in Abdul-Jabbar filing a suit saying Collins cost him $9 million on extravagant investments. Another pitfall Abdul-Jabbar shared with other ballers is he gave power of attorney to his unlettered money man. Legally, this is a blank check. According to the South Florida Sun Sentinel, Abdul-Jabbar sued Collins and others for fraud, negligence, and breach of trust, asking for $50 million in damages. Heather Mitz won three gold medals playing for the U.S. women's soccer team. In 2010, the footballer married American football player A.J. Feely. Even with their combined assets, the athletes aren't exactly rolling in dough, so it must have hit hard when they were caught up in a Ponzi scheme. Mitz and Feely got embroiled with a shady money manager named William Crafton Jr. in 2006. By 2012, the couple, along with two other Eagles players, sued Crafton, SunTrust Bank, and and various management firms for fraud. The plaintiffs say they all told Crafton about the imperative of, quote, a conservative investment strategy, considering the short life of pro sports incomes. Instead, the manager allegedly pumped all their cash into shady schemes run by his crooked cronies in exchange for illegal kickbacks. The suit was settled in 2014 when Crafton agreed to pay $1.7 million. However, Crafton had already filed bankruptcy that year, according to Sports Business Journal, so it seems likely Feely and Mitz will never be made whole. According to the Los Angeles Times, all-time NFL great running back Eric Dickerson met a man in the 1990s known as the Sicilian Gatsby, aka Luigi DeFonzo. Luigi was a sophisticated con artist, FBI informant, and general man of mystery, and over the years, built his clients out of $45 million. One of those clients was Dickerson, who lost $1 million to this fraudster schemes, according to the AP. DeFonzo died under under somewhat mysterious circumstances in 2000, which meant remuneration was not in the cards for the former Rams great, and maybe that's okay. Dickerson's net worth is still estimated at a healthy $10 million, according to Celebrity Net Worth. No matter how much you like your business partner, get a second opinion. That tip would have helped Minnesota Twins pitcher Mike Pelfrey, who told the New York Post he put 99% of his money into a single Ponzi scheme. Pelfrey, via his agent, put his riches into a fraudulent investment run by Texas huckster Alan Stanford, who ran the second biggest Ponzi scheme ever busted, ranking just below the notorious Bernie Madoff. Stanford's $7.2 billion fraud was broken up in 2009, and in 2012, he was sentenced to 110 years in prison. By 2021, about $1 billion in stolen funds had been recovered, but that didn't help Pelfrey, who had to open a new bank account in 2009 just to pay his bills. Fortunately, Pelfrey had another lucrative decade of play ahead of him. He retired in 2018, after earning nearly $47 million in total MLB salary, according to SpotRack. 
When NFL great Bernie Kosar was drafted in 1981, the longtime Browns quarterback finagled his way into staying close to home in Cleveland. Kosar, however, says living in his hometown quickly turned into a problem. According to Kosar's friends, Bernie's generous and affable nature made him an easy target for grifts. Kosar retired in 1997 a millionaire, but by 2009, he had filed for bankruptcy with up to $50 million in debts, according to Cleveland.com. Kosar made lots of bad investments, and a divorce drained him too, but unfortunately, the real cost was good old dad. Kosar revealed to ESPN a history of abuse and manipulation had made him vulnerable to his father, who allegedly swindled him for millions, using the money for personal mortgage and car payments, and at one point even made a deal with the Browns behind Bernie's back for $1 million. Despite those breaches of trust, Bernie still let his old man manage his money, and predictably, just 12 years after leaving the league, Cleveland's favorite son was all tapped out. Despite career earnings of nearly $700 million by Forbes accounting, the New York Times reported that Mike Tyson was broke by 2003. Tyson's admittedly unwise spending on things like the white tiger he kept inside his own home is well documented. To what extent did it almost seem, or did you think that just the money would never run out? I don't know, that's just how I live my life. However, a lesser told story from the Seattle Times is the $100 million he alleges was essentially stolen by his infamous boxing promoter Don King and two managers. Tyson has filed multiple suits against his various business partners, who he claims took advantage of his lack of savvy, saying in 1997, everyone in boxing makes out but the fighter. Court docs indicate King was not merely acting as Tyson's promoter, but also cut himself in for 30% of Iron Mike's earnings, a fraudulent double dip that violates Nevada law. The heavy hitter's finances have improved since his bankruptcy, but never fully recovered. In 2006, Darren McCarty of the Calgary Flames filed for bankruptcy. He was over $4 million in debt, according to court documents obtained by ESPN. His attorney cited a costly divorce and an NHL lockout as the main reasons for his client's financial fiasco. But McCarty's list of creditors is long, varied, and points to some excesses. With McCarty admitting that year, it's obviously an embarrassing situation, but as with most things, there is more to it than what it seems. Also not helping, McCarty's bankruptcy trustee said that the athlete was cheated out of at least $3 million by a Michigan businessman named John Matuk, who allegedly loaned himself millions on assets belonging to McCarty. He did this allegedly by forging his client's signature while paying himself a ludicrous $650,000 salary for a job not well done. Matuk denied any wrongdoing, while McCarty's net worth is now estimated at $500,000 her celebrity net worth. Tim Duncan was always known as a player with a high basketball IQ, but he still got duped in the business world. Around 2003, Duncan got involved with Atlanta-area business scoundrel Charles Banks. Banks began withholding huge sums of Duncan's money on deals they did together, according to Bloomberg, pocketing some $20 million of the Superstar Center's cash. Duncan filed a suit in 2015, and for good reason. Despite his staggering $242 million in career earnings per spot rack, ESPN estimates that the alleged con man got his hands on something like 15% of the athlete's post-tax earnings. Unlike so many out-of-luck athletes on this list, this time justice was served. In 2017, Banks was ordered to pay Duncan $7.5 million and was sentenced by a federal judge to four years of hard time. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite athletes are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.